<clears throat> so yeah, good afternoon, everybody, or uh, good afternoon from the East Coast, at least. And uh, thank you for joining our, uh, our little webinar here at Uptix. My name is Pat Haley. I am a principal solutions engineer at Uptix. So my goal today is to really give you a, a sense for what we're doing here um, at Uptix with our SQL powered security analytics platform. Uh, and to give you a, a quick demo into how we can help in incident investigation. So when you when you think of, of the Uptix platform, and as I, I said, we're this SQL uh, powered security analytics platform. What that means for, for us is we really think of, um, of our platform as a way to collect endpoint telemetry and to apply SQL, SQL aggregate uh, analytics against that data to help solve a whole bunch of different uh, use cases. Uh, a lot of those are in the, the security uh, realm, but increasingly we're seeing more adoption in uh, more IT or operational use cases that rely on endpoint telemetry. Today we'll we'll focus on incident investigation um, as that um, sort of sample use case here. Um, we're only going to use one slide um, in addition to the title slide here, just to to give you a sense for what we're doing in a little bit more context. Um, Throughout the, the presentation here, if you have questions, please feel free to put those into the chat and we'll address those at the end. If you're interested in getting a you know, a one-on-one -on -one, uh, deeper dive or demo, um, just type demo into the chat and our team will follow up with you as well. So here, you know, I like this, um, this sort of uh, outline here around securing cloud workloads because it, it gives a good sense for, for what we can do and an investigation is a core part of this. But if you think about, you know, server infrastructure within your environment, um, so we'll focus on, on Linux infrastructure, but, you know, we, we support um, Linux and Windows servers, of course, uh, Kubernetes and containerized environments on Docker, and of course, you know, desktop environments as well on Windows and Mac. But if you think about server infrastructure and cloud workloads, you might have a mix of on-prem, you know, traditional data center or colos. You might have uh, off-prem, you know, cloud and uh, public and private cloud environments. And, and like many organizations, you're likely, you know, responsible for monitoring within each of these. So we see that very often, and, and this is a way for us to um, apply our platform and collect telemetry from these environments to go and solve a bunch of the use cases you, uh, use cases you see on the far right-hand side. Now, we use uh, OS query as the means to actually collect data within these environments. Uh, we don't um, necessarily use the, the uh, stock version of OS query. We provide uh, an enterprise grade OS query experience through our platform. So all of the management uh, that goes along with OS query is done within our platform. For those that might not be familiar, OS Query is an open source endpoint agent. So it's a cross-platform agent that's focused on really transforming the, uh, the endpoint, the operating system level, into essentially a relational database that you can query with SQL. So standard SQL syntax, nothing, you know, um, uh, proprietary about that. But we are a, a platform that uses OS Query as a means to collect data about these endpoints aggregate that data in our back end, and then use that along with additional analytics that we apply to that data for things like file integrity monitoring, uh, intrusion detection, audit and compliance around, you know, whether the CIS benchmarks, FedRAMP, SOC 2 and the like. Investigation, which is a, a, a natural spot for us to focus on, which we'll look at today. And then we also, specific to Linux workloads, uh, provide for vulnerability detection here as well. So what we're going to look at today is an example of, of actually detecting a potential security incident, but then we're really going to focus on more of the investigative side of this. Um, and in investigation, really what, what we're going to need is, is data, right? We need the data associated with the incident itself, but we also need the additional context behind the alert and the ability to pull in more data as necessary through that investigation. So that's really what we're going to, uh, to take a look at here uh, with the Uptix platform along with OS Query, uh, where we can provide real value into the investigation process. So here we'll just drop out of the actual uh, uh, slide there. We'll log into my demo environment. 
So it's a SaaS platform naturally. We're logging into uh, my demo environment here at pat.uptix.io. And so when you first log in, you'll be greeted with this, uh, this initial page that gives you an overview of the environment. So right now we're monitoring 19 assets overall. I've got 17 of those that are online. I can see a, a recent uh, alert here, and actually there's a count of two where it's, it's been associated with uh, two different assets. And just to give you a sense, if we look at the, the endpoints or the assets that are enrolled, we've got a mix of uh, Mac OS devices, Windows servers, and uh, Ubuntu 1604 devices, all, all that live in, in the cloud. So we're connecting in uh, to our platform from these endpoints, we're collecting data, um, on, a, on a regular basis. We're monitoring for events that are happening on these devices. So things like process executions, network socket events, file changes, user logons, all of the, the event or behaviors that are uh, happening on those systems. In addition to pulling all of the sort of telemetry that makes up the, the state of each of these machines so that from an investigative standpoint, we can go back in time and say, what did this machine look like at a given point in time? All the more important, especially in the shift to uh, cloud workload. So here we'll come back to uh, the dashboard. And so, as I mentioned, the first thing we wanna see is, is something actually get alerted. Now we do have uh, some OSX malware down here uh, as an example, uh, but what we'll do uh, for the, the purpose of the, the demo today is from my virtual machine here, I'll actually trigger uh, a new detection just by running one of our uh, attack simulation scripts here that we call Havoc. Now Havoc is designed to compromise a couple of the hosts within my demo environment. Um, it's really going to take over those machines, start using those machines to uh, compute some Bitcoin, and then ultimately shift that data out of the, uh, the system uh, itself. And so in many cases, what you'll see is that you've got intelligence that detects that type of outbound activity. If we know we, we uh, are seeing network traffic go outbound and we can correlate that data against our intelligence, it's an opportunity to go in and raise that alert for investigation. Now we're using some intelligence that we provide as part of our, uh, the 40 plus open source feeds that our team curates and manages, but naturally you can sub uh, supply your own uh, and feed in your own subscriptions here. But if we actually see this, we've got uh, a count of two now on this, uh, this new alert. So outbound network connection to threat Intel IOC. If we go into this uh, particular uh, event here, or this alert, we can see those two instances. We can see the host and then the actual you know, remote address where we saw that connection. So if we click into the alert detail itself, what you'll see is that we're going to be provided with some general data about the alert. So this is, you know, summary level. What happened? When did it happen? And on what host? But then we can look at one level down and see this metadata. So this metadata is some of the additional detail that we've pulled out of that event that triggered the alert. So from an investigation standpoint, that's really important. I need uh, some level of information right off the bat to help me triage. So I know something about the, the event now. I know the remote address, of course, was this 54165 address. I know that it was to port 444 or 4444. Uh, but then I can also see, here's the underlying process from the endpoint that created this. So NC being netcat, that might be something that, you know, we wouldn't expect to see naturally within uh, most environments. So that's noteworthy. And then we can see the login uh, name associated with this as well. So we already have some initial data points about the event itself, but now we can see, you know, the, the threat information that was, uh, that indicated that we should alert on this. So this is from one of our, our demo sources. So we're simply associating this to malware.com, but we would see the, the full threat source name, description, the indicator, and how we've categorized that intel or how your third party provider has categorized that intel. And we would see that all right here. So it's really important to have this from a, a triage standpoint. What we could also see here are, you know, were there other events that have occurred today um, on this host? Now, we don't have any at, at the moment, but it, it might be interesting if we saw other, you know, events that the Uptix platform has alerted on, right, uh, again, right within this particular frame. So if I were to investigate this, I might take this particular IP address here 
and go over to the investigate page. Now, one of the things I might want to do is, is if I were actually looking at this as a responder, I might do a real time query uh, and I can pull in, you know, a particular uh, query here to, to do something like that, where I simply want to go and run a SQL investigation. So I want to see, show me all, you know, uh, active processes where the remote address is actually equivalent to that one I, I noted. So you can see here, I've got, I've got two addresses, or I'm sorry, I've got two endpoints that have made this connection. And if I see this, now I can actually understand the, the remote address, the process ID associated with that, the current state of the connection. But it's good for me to see that, you know, outside of those two hosts, I don't actually have any other uh, endpoints that are making that same type of connection right now. So that's great. I know I've got 17 assets. I know only two of the 17 are actually, you know, connected to that or have made a connection right now. So I kind of know my, my scope at the, at the present. But if you recall, we actually had 19 assets that we're monitoring. Uh, and also we've got these other 17 with, you know, that have been online and collecting data. So the next question is likely, have we ever seen this type of, of connection previously? Um, and so we can do a couple of different things. One is I might just, you know, take the, um, that same type of query here. And instead of running in that, that real time mode, I can run in a time machine uh, investigation, simply to say, this is historical. Now I wanna know, show me any time we've seen this, you know, connection previously or a connection to this, uh, this address previously. And so you can see, we actually do have a, a few other uh, instances of this. Um, so you might note I, I don't have a date and time. Well, I can simply you know modify my query uh, to go and and pull that in. Now you do have to modify it appropriately and use the right column. But once you do that, you'll see okay we've we've got you know on the 18th, uh, 1440 and 1443 UTC. But this doesn't give me the full context, right? I don't have all of the data that we had before, um, especially from what I saw in the alert. So what you might do is say, all right, I wanna add a little more SQL to this and I simply wanna join a couple of tables. The details here aren't terribly important. Just know that with all of the data that we collect, it's very easy to apply SQL to actually bring in multiple pieces of data altogether. So now we can see those four records. We can see the netcat process was again used in each of those instances. And we can see actually the full command line view of this. So we not only can look back historically, we can see the full command line execution. We can see the user ID here. So we can really start to build some, some additional context behind all of, the, um, all of this. Now, one really interesting thing is for this type of connection where you have that network threat, these might be questions that you ask each and every time. So naturally we don't necessarily wanna go and do this work each and every time. So one of the things that you can do actually is from the alert itself, we have what we call context queries. These are queries that we associate with the actual alert rule to say, here's the playbook I wanna run each time this alert fires. Go and get that data and present that to me right here. So I never even have to leave the alert details page. So now I can see other socket events that have occurred out to this remote address. So we can see some of those uh, other connections here with the, you know, that same path, basically the, the details of the, what we see in the metadata information, but we can see it for all previous occurrences. And here I could actually go in and look at process events. Maybe I wanna get a whole lot deeper into the process uh, data uh, associated with this, this type of event. So when this uh, alert fires, go and look at all of the process details. We can see Netcat, we can see the process, uh, the current working directory. We could look at the you know, full ancestor list of this process to see what was the parent, what was the grandparent, uh, or even getting down to the hash of the process that executed here as well. All of that detail is automatically available here in my uh, alert uh, details page and available for my investigation. Now, what's important, uh, an important point to make here is that all of this is also available through the API. So you may actually want to have this alert trigger a notification that goes out to, you know, something like a SOAR platform, 
platform like Demisto, uh, your SIM or ticketing platform like ServiceNow, uh, all of that can be handled directly with the, the notifications that are enabled directly in the platform. And then any of this additional context or any of the other historical data could be automatically retrieved via the API for investigation and, and review outside of our platform as well. So both options are available simply depending on, on how you want to take advantage of, of our technology. So that's it. That's the, you know, uh, a little intro into to what we're doing here at Uptix with our SQL analytics uh, platform and an example of how we can be used not only for detection purposes, but really taking advantage of this robust set of telemetry that we capture from an investigative standpoint either directly in our platform here or also you know, in external platforms via, via integration or via API uh, capabilities.